So now let's go ahead and pack it up and get out of the grooves and move into the mapping. Hey y'all and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and start looking at the mapping window. And we'll begin by clicking the mapping tab up here at the top. Now this probably looks familiar to you because it is more or less a mirror image of the standard view from the construct window. Up here, you'll see we still have access to our libraries. Right here, we still have access to our combined presets. And yes, we still have the option to choose between instruments on that particular kit. But the new kits on the block are on the right hand column here and down at the bottom. Now in this video, I'd like to go ahead and cover this portion down here at the bottom of the mapping window. Right here, we have the option to view the keyboard as notes or CC messages. And here you'll see a drop down menu where you can find any presets. And here in the MIDI sub menu, you'll see we have clear, default, note mapping. Let's go ahead and say, for example, that I am someone who's more familiar with the IMAP from Sonic Reality. You can see that this is now a map that is just like the IMAP you'll find on Sonic Reality. You see how they have the four notes right there associated with the kick drum. If you were to select the snare drum by right clicking or control clicking, you'll see the same things that you would with the IMAP. And then likewise for the cymbals or the toms, you'll find everything the same that you would if you're a Sonic Reality IMAP user. Right here, we'll see the original MIDI mapping for Superior. But I wanted to show you exactly what that was. Okay, now should you decide to get back to the default MIDI mapping, all you have to do is go right there to where it says default, and then we're good to go. Here you'll also find pedal correction, and if you decide to create any user presets, this is where you'll find them. And here at the bottom, we'll see some usual suspects. Next load selected only, save selected as, save as, save delete, manage and finder, or explore. Next, we'll see a MIDI node submenu where we have the option to clear the MIDI nodes, and I will cover that in a moment. We also have a place where we can save our user presets, and then we'll also see the save as, save, delete, and manage and finder or explorer options. Now, moving right along, and next I'd like to talk about the virtual keyboard. Yes, it is an operational keyboard, meaning you can go ahead and click on a note and hear the kit piece associated with that note. Once again, for a full list of the MIDI layout, you can always come to the help menu. And in this example, since I'm using the Metal Foundry library, I would go to Metal Foundry and then go to MIDI layout. Next thing I'd like to talk about are the colors of the keyboard. You might have noticed that right here, there are some white keys and a black key. Well, this represents keys that are not used at all. That's why you cannot click on them or hear any sound. However, the gray keys will represent the notes affiliated with the kit pieces. Okay, that means that there are kit pieces associated with those notes. Now, if I were to scroll all the way to the right hand side of the keyboard to the upper register, you'll see there's another set of white keys and these keys have no effect either. That's because there are no kit pieces associated with those keys. And as you saw a moment ago, you have the option to get into the higher register by clicking the right hand arrow or the lower register by clicking the left hand arrow. Next, I'd like to go ahead and talk about this knob right here. This knob controls the speed at which we hear the arpeggiated note when we decide to slide or click on the velocity bar. Now you can click and move this knob around like so, or for finer increments, you can click and pull away and drag, or you can press the shift key on your keyboard and move it. And if you have a mouse wheel, you can also utilize the mouse wheel. Clicking shift on your keyboard will allow you to move in smaller increments. Now, the higher the value on this knob, the faster the arpeggiated note. However, the lower the value, the slower the arpeggiated note. Now this can be very handy whenever you're editing things such as velocity curves and whatnot, and we're gonna cover that in a moment. But for now, I want you just to know what these functions do. Now you can press Command and click if you're on a Mac or Control click on a PC to return the knob back to its default location. 
And next, you're going to see a little blue light right there. Well, if you click the blue light and cut it off, the arpeggiated note no longer exists. That means you'll have to click on the velocity bar if you want to hear the note. However, when engaged, you will hear an arpeggiated note depending on the speed which you choose. Next, you'll notice this bar I've been clicking on. It starts off a gray shade and moves into a brighter orange shade. This is our velocity bar. Consider this a slider of sorts, where if you click on the lowest part and slide it, you'll hear the velocity getting higher. Next, you'll see a display that tells you the actual velocity where you're clicking. For example, if I click here in the middle, we'll see the velocity for that particular hit is 69. Next, if we go up, you'll see it's 89, and then 107, and 123, and down here we'll find 13. So it can be a very helpful tool, especially whenever you're editing things such as velocity curves. So I want y'all to stick with me, because next we're going to go ahead and start talking about everything here on the right-hand column. I hope this helped you out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.